On this episode of NSFW Show, we are joined by not only Andrew Maine, but also his production team, the executive producers behind the show, Don't Trust Andrew Maine, Mary Jarris, Joke, and Biagio. We talk about the show. We talk about black gold. We talk about reality show pitches that will make your head spin. It's all coming up on this edition of the NSFW Show. <laughs> Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 212, recorded on January 7th, 2014. Bigger, please. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Ting.com. Ting is a mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay for only what you use. Ting doesn't require a contract and offers unlimited devices on one shared plan. To save $25 on your first Ting device, visit NSFW.Ting.com. That's NSFW.Ting.com. And audible.com to download a free audiobook of your choice. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. And Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code NSFW1. SFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets, the show that is nominally safe for work. OMG, beautiful party people, it's Brian Brushwood in Austin, Texas, joined, uh, I don't know, even know where the hell he is, by Justin Robert Young. Justin, where the hell are you, sir? Davie, Florida, the city of lights. <laughs> From fabulous Davie, Florida, it's Justin Robert Young, and you could already hear the real star of the show. That would be the uh, the daughter of Joke and Biagio in the background. You want to set us up with this, Justin? Uh, yes. Uh, this is going to be a very, very special episode, and, and we've had a lot of very uh, process, uh, you know, bit kind of episodes. This is going to be a little bit more freeform because really, folks, it is a celebration. We talk a lot about on this show about the Diamond Club, about the community that has sprung up around this show. And I would say without a hesitation that the Diamond Club comes to your cable televisions next Monday, January 13th, when our guest Andrew Main stars in Don't Trust Andrew Main. Welcome back, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, uh, Jason. <laughs> uh, already, already he's forgotten and Justin, of course the people Justin, sorry. who made it a reality in uh, I guess the descending order of your video screen Mary Jarris, Joke and Biagio uh, who have all been on the show at, at various times uh, uh, welcome everybody well thank you for having us Yeah, and uh, you know we had to bring our, our daughter along tonight because it's uh it's almost her bedtime, but not quite, so hopefully she won't get too crazy. Uh, yeah, all right, so uh, and for those of you guys who don't know, I don't know if uh, you mentioned it, I was fixing stuff, but Joe Biascio also have their own podcast, Producing Unscripted, which uh, I absolutely adore, is a naked grab to uh, steal young talent that needs to have their own reality show before anyone else could get their hands onto them. If you want to get into television, their advice is absolutely vital, I think is awesome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, all we ever try to do is be one one thousandth as cool as you guys are. So <laughs> it means it, it, seriously, it means so much that you even know we have a podcast. So thank you, thank you very much. So all right, so, so Brian, Brian, did I get Brian called me? This is a true story. Brian uh -oh. called me to geek out about the fact that he was out on a bike ride, uh, <laughs> listening to your show as a fan. And then had his name said on your show as somebody who was writing into the show as a fan and was like, oh, my God, it was so weird. And, he, he <laughs> and then they said my name and I'm like, oh, my God, that's great. 
<laughs> uh, amazing. All right, so where where do you want to take things first, Justin? Because we uh, we we wanted it to be free form, but that sort of means we don't have a roadmap. I have one idea for a bit, and I have a special announcement down the, down the way that I wanted to share with you. But everything else, you're driving this ship. All right. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. I, I feel like this this should be uh, kind of the, the chronicling of uh, don't trust Andrew Main. Uh, so let's let's start at uh, let, let's start at well, uh, Mary. Uh, yeah. You met me and Andrew when uh, when we all worked on a pilot uh, together many many years ago. What what were your first impressions of of Andrew and then and then the uh, the furry sidekick for which he imported from Jersey? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He promised me a monkey, which um, turned out not to be the I'll case. I'll tell you what, you gave him about eighty <laughs> percent. First impression of Andrew. Um, yeah, the guy who was taking stuff off my bookshelves in the office and wouldn't leave. That was. Then you know, bringing, bringing you know, for that for that project, we knew we wanted to have uh, try to go for something fun, and then so I'm like, I know a guy. <laughs> He'd be a great you know co-host kind of person to bring in yeah. on something, and uh, I underpromised <laughs> and overdelivered when Justin showed up. Actually, that's very true. So no, my first impressions of him were just. A little bit crazy, but a little bit smart, a little bit, you know, once he started talking about monkeys and science, he had me. <laughs> you had me at monkeys. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. So what a weird, I'll tell you what's weird for me watching this whole process is, is uh, number one, it's, it's weird to suddenly have a friend drop off the face of the earth and then like months later find out that, uh, that he's, that he's secretly working on this stuff. The secrecy thing is amazing that you can keep your mouth shut because I can't do that. But uh, uh, and then to watch the promotion engines happen, by the way, we've already pimped it before, but everyone needs to go to uh, Facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Main. They got uh, uh, you know what we should show one of the which one of these promos should we show? Yeah, sure. Yes. All right. Here, I'm going to play. I'm going to play this one. I'm Andrew Main. Right here. And I love to screw with people. What did you do? <laughs> Check this out. It's your wedding ring? It goes right inside, like so. What? No! Don't trust Andrew May. New series, Monday, January 13th at 10 on a and &E. So, like, like to, 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 to drop into a black hole and then come out like, by the way, giant freaking show on a and &E, uh, I, I don't know. From being on the outside, it's just been bizarre and otherworldly to watch it happens and to see the, the gargantuan promotional engine kick into effect. Um, but I guess what? this is old hat for you guys, right? Joe Cabiaggio? <laughs> no. no, no, I gotta tell you, it's, it's, it speaks a lot to Andrew's star power, and I'm not just kissing his butt, that a and &E is is doing this kind of promotion because not all shows get the same kind of promotion you know, we love all of our babies. We work our butts off to make every show as good as we can and all that. But then the network is like, okay, this show's maybe going to do good. This show, maybe not so much. This show, we're going to give a platform to. And they're really giving the platform to Andrew. And I think that speaks to, you know, his skill as a, as a magician, his his just like ability. He's just a different kind of magician than they've had. on. He's, a, he's as far away as you can go from Chris Angel as, as possible. And I think that that's an interesting thing. I think that's it's a way for A&E to do a different kind of magic, to sort of evolve the genre. And clearly, like, they're excited about it because Andrew's everywhere. So okay, congrats to you, on. Andrew. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going to. We're going to get to uh, Andrew in a second. I just want to make one point. Yes. That my entire career on the internet, the only thing I've ever heard is, "Oh my God, that guy sounds like Charlie Day." And in the chat room right now, there are people who are saying that, and yet for the first time since I have been any kind of personality, they are not saying it about me, but rather Biagio. Oh my God, you're so right. <laughs> Uh, so just, I, I, sorry, that was a very, very personal moment. But uh, Andrew, uh, as everything was, uh, you know, coming together for for Don't Trust Andrew Main, and and you were first talking to Biagio, what was going through your head? Well, uh, you know, everything that's happened, I just got to say, every, I owe to everybody on the screen. You, Brian, Mary, Joke, Biagio. See how and, quickly and, I ducked that. Too. I, I jumped um, out. <laughs> and what's you know you we've all we all work on projects we all work on stuff and you want to be able to kind of do something that's true to what you set out to do you get opportunities along the way where maybe you could do other things but 
you know, there is a spirit to the kind of things we do, a sense of humor and a reverence to what we do. And so when the opportunity came up, when these guys called me up and said, do you still want to do something in this area? Um, it was very exciting. It's very exciting to sort of see that a lot of that work pay off. You know, Mary and I have been working together for <laughs> seven, or eight, seven years or so. <laughs> you know, uh, Joe and Biagio for, is it maybe five years now, guys? Yeah, right? 2008, I think. Five years. Five. Yeah, five years. And so, you know, one of the things that happens is that uh, I've cheerleaded stuff that they've done when they've done, you know, from their podcast, their Dying to Do Letterman projects. You know, Mary, we've been production partners for years and she's done stuff I haven't all, you know, tried to give support and help to that. And we've helped a lot of each other out. And the same with you and Justin, you know, Brian, you guys, is that it's that's the sort of thing. So it's rewarding to see you know, you don't do that because you want something out of it. You do it because you like the people and you want to see them succeed. But it's rewarding when those things fold back in together and how it all fits. Uh, all right. Well, look, uh, here's the thing. You guys are going to make a billion dollars on the show. I'm very excited about it. But we want you to cable, make. Brian. We want you to make. Cable. OK, a trillion free dollars. Cable. Fine. It's free cable. I we want a billion pesos. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we want you to make even more money and be thinking about the next project. That's the whole thing I hear is that once you're success in Hollywood, they're going to say, what else you got? And you need ideas. Joe Biagio, here's the thing. I've been listening to Producing Unscripted, been thinking about it. And then I asked Chat Realm to do all the work for me to come up with your next big story. Now, here's the thing. These are ideas. I just want you to workshop them a little bit. See how you can make it a success. Because I think there's a there's there's something, there's a kernel to these. Uh, but but it's up to you guys to spin the magic here. The first show that they pitched is called <laughs> What uh, What Did the Jones Say? And the question is, people on the street try to figure out what is actually Jones, uh, what is Alex Jones actually talking about? <laughs> So in this case, you play. We play a random clip for Alex Jones, and uh, and somebody just tries to translate into normal person talk. How can we make this work? Wow! Um, now you're gonna leave me, Jones. You're gonna walk away now. Come on, how do we make this show work? What do we, what do we put this on? What is this a Comedy Central show? Is this Spike? Is this? Can we add a torture element? Can we uh, yes. We, can we up the action a little bit? Absolutely. <laughs> I think we have somebody volunteering. He's screaming the whole time, so it's even harder <laughs> to hear what he's actually saying. It's a <laughs> I feel it's terrible. We're yeah, making, she's we're making Joe's Hallie cry. Out of out, which is which really screws me yes. because what you guys don't know is joke is the brains and the beauty. Oh, we I'm know. We know here. that, Biagio. <laughs> I don't do anything. I think, I think we are watching that uh, play itself out here on the internet for all to see. All right, look, we'll move on to something no, else. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, uh, wait, I, I wait. feel like I feel like we have we have something here. Uh, Andrew, uh, uh, you are you obviously bring a, a, a huge element to this. There's uh, you know uh, what uh, is Alex Jones uh, actually saying? Is there is there any kind of uh, Andrew Main flair you can add to this idea? I like that he's like whispering just really rational things into your ear, you know, <laughs> like, you know, compound interest is good, you know, central banking may be a little bit suspicious, but in the best bet, you better go with it. <laughs> maybe that, maybe that could be the, uh, the actual startling reveal in the show is that so everything wait. he's saying is very traditional and makes a lot oh, of sense. Oh, so maybe that's it. So it's all right. So it's actually Alex Jones, yes. right? You make it kind of like cash cab. <laughs> like he just, he's just in he's in an uber car you know and and, and he picks you up and he's like just talking to you and he's doing oh, wait, what's the uh, what's the alternative to to uber where the you drive lyft. your own car lyft there you go yeah. man alex jones in a lyft would be amazing and then he just blows your mind with the with his conspiracy truth that he reveals and just for fun we could bring back the pop-up video pop-up and do little thought bubbles the whole time. That's good. So just give it a little extra and a little extra narrative layer, you know. So we can we can do some, you know, do 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 some do, do some jokes, do the funny, you know, bring the comedy, the humor. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I explained the chemical compounds of thermite and how it may have been involved in a uh, inside job of 9/11. There you They're go. Right there in a hilarious little pop-up. All okay. right. Next one. Idea two. The Real Housewives of Twit and NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> A, dr a bunch of drunk, this is, these are their words, a dump, bunch of drunk bitches complaining about how rich and white they are. Guess what? They are work buddies on a morning show. They're also both secretly men. What do you think? This one's ready to go. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, is there a network that wouldn't buy this one? I think we should just cut right now. I mean, I'll see if I can get some people on the phone. Listen, it is disturbing to me 
how matched the skin tone of me. Because we're really <laughs> listening. There's an image, a Photoshop image of me and uh, Brian's faces on the heads of Hoda and Kathy Lee on like the fourth hour of the Today Show with ruin of bottles on the side. <laughs> and it is disturbing how much both of our skin tones match the body. Feel it, like... is, it looks amazing. Well done. I feel like we got money in the bank here. All right, next up. The second time, it took me the second time I saw that image to realize that was a Photoshop. I was like, <laughs> those are kind of ugly women. Let me read the text. All right. Right. This one, uh, now they're suggesting that this might be a fit for a and I'm going to say don't limit it. It could go to any network. They, uh, This is the show that literally takes you inside all of Hollywood's hottest stars. It's called Famous Anus. <laughs> inside <laughs> the reality stars. What do you think? Well, if we can send them to space, oh. we could call it Famous Uranus. <laughs> it's on the Science <laughs> Channel. Fair enough. That works. Now uh, listen, uh, 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 who who did this? Larry the Cable uh, the, Guy. The the, the, colon, the colonoscopy. Yeah, Larry like, the Pat Cable Lauer Guy just did it. La- La- Larry the Cable Guy just did it and tweeted out that he woke up from yeah, and Al Roker, right? Uh, yeah, apparently, Al that's Roker. the hot new thing to do is to is to get your insides <laughs> take it checked out. <laughs> Anyway, well, audio listeners, what you cannot hear is, uh, or maybe you could because his head was moving back and forth so fast, was Andrew Maine shaking his head uh, in, a, in a negative fashion so as to not give Biagio any ideas for season two of Don't Trust Andrew Maine. <laughs> See, I'm, th- I'm thinking holiday special. <laughs> It'll be special, all right. Talk about jolly. Come by the on, way, guys. by the way, I get the strong impression that this is shockingly close to actual production meetings with Andrew Main, in which he has to hear ideas thrown out that he's uh, maybe less enthusiastic about. Yeah, these are these are fairly tame and a little better than what we usually pitch. <laughs> so, all uh, right. Well, I'll tell you what, Brian. Uh, we will get to oh. uh, our next uh, our next. Uh, uh, pitch here. Go ahead. But first, we got to pay some bills, I bet. We do, we do have to pay some bills. Brian. Yes, sir. Uh, I have one sound. Uh, you have a sound. Sure. What is it? No, I have a sound for you. Oh. And I want you to explain what it means. Okay. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hold on. Let me get my listening ears on. Got it. Ting. Uh, that is the sound of the Cheshire Cat grin of Andrew Maine after pulling off one of his shenanigans on Annie's Don't Trust Andrew Maine. Yes, and listen again. Ting! Oh, that is also the sparkly shine shoes that uh, that you pan down on Andrew Maine. <laughs> One more time. Yeah. Yes, and. Ting! Oh, no, that one's slightly different. That, I believe, is the MVNO reseller that makes it possible for you to get the cellular service that you want on your device with no contracts, no BS, and none of the nonsense that we have had to deal with for years. Brian, uh, you said it right. No BS. You want to know what BS stands for? Uh, I just wanted to curse. <laughs> no, what, what does BS stand for? The, the Bilderberg service. <laughs> the, the, no, Bilderberg service. No, no Bilderberg service when it comes Alex. to Ting. Alex, always with Ting. I don't understand, <laughs> Alex. You're always on about Ting and the MVNL resellers. It's not Pierce, pro- Pierce. The- Ting is a no BS. That is a Bilderberg service. You want to know what Bilderberg services are? T service. A- Alex. Uh- Boot and shoe service. <laughs> service and tennis. No Bilderberg service. You want to know what it will give you? Yeah, what? Freedom. 1776 will rise again when you subscribe to Ting. Uh, Alex, uh, wait, wait, uh, 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 Alex, I've got a contract. Why would I want yes. to? No. Listen, number one, no contracts or ETFs. Truly and completely contract free. No early termination fees either. Because you know what else wants to terminate you early? The government. <laughs> Also, no bundling or ride-along services, no overage, overage charges or penalties, and no add-on charges. No mysterious line items on your bill. You ever seen a bill and seen a mysterious line item that uh, says uh, Agent uh, Orange put in your child's pudding? Uh, uh, Alex. That's mysterious. I don't want it. Get out of here. Uh, Ting makes it free of, of, for me from that. <laughs> Alex, I, 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 I don't understand why. How about you understand this? No hold customer support. Okay? That's yeah. not, Alex, that's a fantasy. That's a fantasy. Pierce, Pierce. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson never waited on hold for anybody. 
Thomas Paine never waited on hold for anybody. <laughs> You're not going to wait on hold for anybody when you call 1-855-TING-FTW anytime between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, uh, Alex, how can how can someone take advantage of it? online support. I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> Help.ting.com has active customer forums. Here's the deal. You go ahead and you purchase your mobile device with Ting, and you can receive that in two to five business days, or you can bring over your favorite Sprint phone to Ting. Then you get it all tinged up, and you live a life of happiness, freedom, and joy, the likes of which every American deserves. <laughs> I got a break character because somebody in the chat says that your mustache gives you a plus 10 to selling. <laughs> like, I instantly want to buy whatever you're selling. Well, there we go. NSFW.ting.com. Save money and better manage your mobile phone usage with Ting. Check out their savings calculator to see how much your company can save. And also, NSFW viewers, which if you are hearing this, you indeed are. Uh, can save $25 on your first Ting device when you sign up. Visit nsfw.ting.com and start saving today, Pers! <laughs> uh, right on. All right, look, we're just going to burn through the rest of these because i got some other ideas that I want to share with you guys. But uh, real quick, just give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Andrew, is there any way to save an idea for a show called Everyone Loves Cheeto? Of course, Cheeto in the chat. I mean, everybody does love Cheeto. Seems obvious. Nope. Everyone hates him. Uh, no, no. Number five, between the sheets. Oh, right. Listen, <laughs> listen. Listen. Man, all these ideas are just slowly <laughs> devolving into slash fiction. With the two of us. Listen in on the daily phone calls between Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young as they bear their souls <laughs> to each other in ways that committed couples never ever will. Reenact it with puppets after 10 p.m. I say go with puppets and go for Nick at night. Ooh. All right. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. Whoa, back up on that package there. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That works. All right. Uh, idea six. Who uh, dealt wait, it? I was going to say that the matching between the head and body was way more accurate when I was Hoda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who dealt it? An amazing game of wits where players guessed who farted in an elevator. Uh, what do you say? Is there, is there anything to be done? Belmont. She's got the look right there. I think everybody's going to know that right away. <laughs> I'll tell you how I always win this game is I just blame it on my daughter. Oh, Dirty that's diaper. good. <laughs> it's better than having a dog. Um, uh, <laughs> three, oh, Jesus. <laughs> three preachers' daughters take on the world. Yeah. Yeah. By did, you starting, the, did you read the title? Yeah, uh, Heart, Heart of Dixie. There we go. Heart of Dixie, three preacher's daughters take on the world by starting a band against the wishes of their father. Justine has affections for a young farmhand named Colin, but he shows no interest in her. Brandine is tone deaf and doesn't know it, while Christy is secretly super dumb. Follow as they make mistakes and strive for fame on their way to Hollywood. <laughs> And of course, the uh, the, fo uh, the the Photoshop here has Justin Bryan and, and a very sassy looking OMG Chad. I say you just script that and sell it to the CW. It's ready to go. Yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Mary and Andrew. You guys have a, a very impeccable sense of style. Is it just me or is Chad pulling off that old lady's haircut? Chad I'm can pull like anything off. <laughs> Look at that. I feel like he showed up to work at Twit tomorrow. He'd be like, hey, man. Great haircut. Oh, my God. I would what pay. color is he now? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's still white. He's very white. Yeah, when did he go from red to okay? When did he, when did he switch off <laughs> Oh, you meant his hair. Got it. All right. No, no, no. He's red. He's still red. Yeah, he's, he's still, still red. red. Okay. Uh, that was, I was intentionally misunderstanding. Broke back colon. A young farmhand oh, come named... Oh, honestly. <laughs> a young farmhand named Colin struggles with his unusually strong love and passion for his work and unconventional personal life. The townsfolk don't take kindly to his modern views on life, love, and happiness, and Colin has to show them that his love is just as pure as theirs. It's kind of like, you know, an Equus meets, like, Amish Mafia. <laughs> See? <laughs> totally workable. Or as I like to think of it, it's money in the bank. See, Andrew, this is why you're great in the room. <laughs> uh, we got here, Idea 9, Get Dusted, coming of age story about a kid from the backwoods who goes into the big city and starts up a crop dusting business for <laughs> rooftop gardens. Hey, Spike. listen, no, no, I'm not even kidding. If you find a crop duster, you know, who's kind of, you know, kind of good looking, maybe a little bit older, not young kid, sell it to Discovery. Done. Or history. Yeah, or history. You know, they Tell love, they love those kind of shows with the odd jobs, a little bit of action, you know, I, somewhere in middle America. Listen, that's, hey, find me a crop duster. 
I'll tell I you what. Sell that show. Actually, no, I think you're right. And I'll tell you what, you get one with a heart of gold, you call it you call the show Angel Dust. And then yes. uh, money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, yeah, yeah, Michael Landon as a crop duster. Uh, Angel it, duster. it looks like that's all what they got problem? right now. We'll see if they come up with Where, anything else. Uh, Andrew, later. Andrew, what's the problem? No, you're with your Michael Landon suggestion. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> there is the that. fact that he's dead. All right. You'll actually have to shoot it in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, I hear you get a great credit there. Uh, all right. So, uh, man, there's there's some stuff. Uh, I've got some other stuff to share, unless you want to go in a different direction, Justin. Where you want to take stuff? Brian, I feel like the the dam that holds in the truth and honesty uh, of your life is is bursting at the seams and is about to break. You should share your announcement with everybody. Brian, share, share. Well, no, it's not. It's not an announcement. I'm just saying. When I say you know me, I'm like a I'm like a dumb collector. I'm 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 like a, a junkyard hobo who's got like something shiny that he wants to show. He can't possibly come up with an original thought or anything useful Hold on, on his own. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Joke, Biagio, what can you do with Junkyard Hobo? I feel like we have something. <laughs> true TV. Yeah, True TV. True TV. Oh, that's a game we should play. You and I should just hey, name. Everyone, I just love the fact that Joke and Biagio just have network Tourette's. It's like there's <laughs> like any sentence and it's just like, True TV, science, ID. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, this is actually a hell of a game. I think the chat room should just give us titles and then they can tell us what network would most likely buy them. This is a little segment we like to call uh, Ruining Their Reputation with Joe and <laughs> hey, I gotta get a, some more water on yeah. <laughs> uh, No, there is this amazing... Uh, I'll tell you what, we don't normally break down commercials, but I saw a commercial so amazing that I refuse to believe it's real. It's so note perfect that uh, l l let me get it called up and, and you can for the, uh, we'll call it what's Justin watching right now and you can no, break no, this why, down. No, we have so many amazing people here. How about, uh, and uh, what is Andrew Main watching? That's even a better idea, Andrew Main, because he's the star of Don't Trust Andrew Main. All right, Andrew Main, I'm going to play a bit of this. You describe for the audio listeners what we're looking at. Here no, we here, go. No, here. Uh, Brian will play it and then stop it, so don't comment while it's happening. Uh, basically, what we do here every once in a while is uh, for the audio listeners, you can't see these hilarious videos that we bring up. Uh, we will play them so you can, so the video listeners can see them. And then once we stop it, uh, Andrew, you describe what has been shown in the last five seconds or so. All right, you ready? Here we go. This is the, the opening shot here. Dutchman. All right, there we go. Right there. So far, what are you seeing? I see awesome. I see like uh, like it's like eighties music playing with just some glitzy flashing lights. Saw like a desert and all of a sudden did this close up of a headlight turning on. It was kind of a little night rider feel. It was all right. pretty exciting. Offers black gold. Black gold. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just all right, Andrew. <laughs> Uh, I see when I really hit my pay dirt, what I'm going to buy. <laughs> I see my future. I see what I'm going to be driving around in town in. And I like it a lot. And the anniversary. Wait, by, by the way, hold on, wait. Uh, just so everybody in the audio listeners, that, that is a car, right? Because you can go <laughs> many, many different ways with a thumping, pulsing face beat and black gold being repeated. I kind of like uh, the, the, the duplicitous imagery that people could have been getting. Dodson 280CX. Very few will possess its... <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I see a very striking woman, and I see the ju the haunting stare of Justin Robert Young. <laughs> can we can we get Justin to reenact this moment right here? I just want to see him do More the two. <laughs> I feel like, uh, man. All right, hold on. Here we go. Let me get Justin. Go for it, buddy. That's pretty good. <laughs> It's pretty good. All right. Says it's limited number. So lavishly appointed, there are virtually no options. <laughs> the 10th anniversary. Andrew? Uh, it's pure awesome. I'm sorry. It's liquid gold really is what it <laughs> You're is. You're literally it's just in balls. love with it, the, the product. It is. It is just this flashing of images of what everything I grew up thinking would be cool would look like. Big, thick handlebar mustache. Some woman just wearing glossy, glossy makeup and then making out with her in front of a bright spotlight <laughs> and turning the ignition to my futuristic awesome car. First three, 280ZX is Datsun, driven to the ultimate. Uh, 
And I'm sorry, I do stand corrected. It's like drinking liquid black gold. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so when I saw that, that was so note perfect. I couldn't possibly imagine that actually being real, but everyone assures me that that's a real ass car and a real ass uh, commercial. I mean, that's like either a commercial for a car like 30 years ago or 40 ounce today. <laughs> <laughs> or a Daft Punk video. Yeah. Like there's always the third option. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, oh, shoot. There, uh, yeah. All right. I also have... Um, Man, there's one I can't play on uh, on NSFW, but somebody. Oh, come on, Bry. Do, do you want me? You want me to play it? Get, no. The, the, uh, uh. Actually, we can play it until we can't. Let's see. You, 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 you want to do the rodeo? What's that? You want to do the rodeo? What's that? Uh, uh, well, oh, see, so see you, how see how long we can go. See how long you can go, and you you can't. You just yeah, you got to feel it when when the offensive materials. Come. All right, all right, here we go. I'll try. I'll try my best. The belt is on the line. The belt is on the line. All right, I'll risk a belt. You haven't seen this, have you, Justin? No. Justin, you want to? All right. So, so for the audio listeners, we're we're coming in on a, a, a what looks to be the Brody Quest video. When the pimps in the crib, ma, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. When the pigs try to get at you, park it like it's hot. Park it like it's hot. Park it like it's hot. Like it's hot. Brody. Get an attitude. Pop it like it's hot. Pop it like it's hot. Pop it like it's hot. I got the rollie on my arm and I'm pouring Sean Don. And I'm- we don't give a why, why. We don't give a why, why. Get it on the floor. Get it, get it on the floor. Why? I did get a little bit greedy. Dude, it goes so many places. It goes, it goes, it's the maybe the most amazing thing that that we've seen in the history of Brody Quest. Anyway, so for everybody listening, it, it's a it's a huge gigantic mega mix with a video uh element that is the Brody Quest, uh the Adrian Brody making his way through here. It's yeah, it's amazing. So that's uh, I think that's all I got in the video side. Uh, uh, all right. Well, you want to know what? Let's let's pay another bill, and then we will get into uh, what everybody can expect from what critics on NSFW show are calling <laughs> the greatest cable television show ever created. <laughs> Don't trust Andrew Main. Beginning as, January 13th. as NSFW fans call it, the greatest story ever told. <laughs> 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 is, Don't trust Andrew Main. Coming up on AD. Uh, but before, listen. Uh, as cultural will be will be defined by before and after. Don't trust Andrew Maine. Uh, we will have to listen to chronicles, thick, dusty tomes of how our world was changed. And when those come to be published, you will be best to listen to them on Audible.com. Wow, man! I listened to that whole pitch and spent the entire time wondering what product and/or service you were about to pitch me. <laughs> And I'm glad we finally came down to, to, to familiar territory with Audible.com. Look, man, you know I'm the biggest Audible fan on the planet. I'll oh, physically assault no. anyone who says they uh-uh. love it more than me. I'm a bigger fan. No. Yeah, I do, am. Bigger, please. You do not love Audible <laughs> as much as I do. All Look right? at that fan, bro. Look at that fan. That's a huge-ass fan. And that's, I built that to symbolize my love for Audible. All right, name one book that you've enjoyed on Audible. All right, how about this one? <laughs> name them. There's so many. They're all coming through my head right now. How about the squared circle? How about that one? Wait, is that a real thing? Yeah, it is. What is it? It's a book about professional wrestling. Oh, that's, that's right. Uh, you were talking about this. And it was great. How about something a little lighter, like Devil in the Grove, about race lynchings in Florida? <laughs> Ah, uh, man. I became a better man because I understood the troubled racial history of my home state by way of audible.com. I became a better human being. So you're saying like audible doesn't just entertain you while you're doing the dish. It actually makes you a better person. 
Yes, a better Pearson. <laughs> better Pierce. Pier- better Pierce. So. I, I used to just be a regular Pearson, and then I became a better Pearson. Brian, how about how about some of your favorite Audible books? Uh, well, first of all, you know I've already talked about it, and and this is like legitimately. I'm going to take a moment and thank uh, Andrew Main personally for for uh, uh, turning me on to what might be. My all-time favorite Audible experience was listening to The Rational Optimist. Like, that started a chain of me. First, after reading The Rational Optimist, it got me excited about reading uh, Steven Pinker's book, Better Angels of Our Nature. Uh, and uh, and then from there, I read Abundance, which is the guy from the guy who created the Ansari uh, X Prize. Uh, dude, it's just amazing to find out the factual history of how much better the world's getting. What are you, what are you reading right now, Andrew? Are you doing Audible at the moment? I am doing Audible. Glad you asked that. Yeah. Um, I've actually uh, got two audiobooks. Going to right now, listening to Gods of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs, which is kind of you know, a nice little throwback. And then I just started in watching you know Dexter again, and it got me thinking maybe I should listen to the novels. So there they are, the Dexter novels, Darkly Dreaming Dexter. The first one is on Audible, and I've been listening to that right now. Joke Biagio, do you guys do uh, the Audible? I... Uh- no, our reading is mostly like my first book of colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Where is my <laughs> belly button? <laughs> Where is baby's belly button? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know. What, what, about, what about you, Mary? I'll tell you what, I feel like you could do the audible reading for those. You know? <laughs> Mary, do you do audible or do you read actual books? I read actual books. That's all right. I, and, I ain't, ain't going to hate on you. Allow, allow us to descend upon you like uh, like missionaries to the unwashed <laughs> village to let you know what you can get with Audible. All right? Number one, more than 150,000 titles available for you. Many of them on a bridge. But people still think that this is like this books on tape era, right? Where all their books were you know chopped up into a fourth of the size because you had to fit them on tapes or CDs. No, everything is on a bridge that comes out now. And it is amazing. And then how about this? New titles, old titles, and you can get them best on a subscription. Now that's what me, Brian, and Andrew have. It's kind of like, it's funny, uh, Andrew, you were talking about Netflix. I never really thought about it like this, but considering the length of each title, it is kind of almost like a Netflix experience where you just think, hey, I should check this out. And then boom, because you have some credits on subscription, you just pop it in there, get the audio book and listen to it. If you think about something, let's say like Game of Thrones, where those books are like 30 hours and it is 30 hours of ear and brain candy every time you sit down and listen to it. One of my favorite audible experiences was First Game of Thrones book was it every I'd go to bed a little bit early so I could go listen to like in you know thirty minutes and that turned into an hour then it turned into two hours and turned into four hours and then the sun would be up. <laughs> I'm like I need to do something with my life right now. But well, you know what occurs to me also is that uh, you know if you do prefer to uh, both read the physical book or or we'll say the Kindle version of the book or whatever they got that whisper sync down to where you could listen for a while and then swap mm-hmm. over to the auto, uh, to the physical. Uh, wait, what would you call? It? I guess Kindle version. I guess the the ebook and then switch the back e-book to the version. Yeah, 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 yeah. The physical version. The physical. With really malicious air quotes. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, look. None. The only thing that matters is how can they make us look really, really good. Audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW is where they need to go. When you sign up, you're a new listener. Let's say Joke, Biagio, Mary. You guys want to, you're like, oh my God, I got to get on this Audible train right now. You go to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW, you're going to get one free credit. Okay, 99.5% of all the books are one credit, and you will enjoy the ever loving hay out of it. Go crazy. Audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW is where you need to go to do it. Tell you what, when you make all the more money because you got so much smarter by going to audible.com, you could spend all that extra money that you make on uh, this, a 1980 Dotson 280ZX. $22,000. I think I figured out a negotiating point for a season two. <laughs> yeah, you just need to write a trick around it. You're like, I don't know. Uh, you sit on it and then you fall down because it pulls away. Yeah, we need to use a 1980 Dotson 280ZX, 10th anniversary edition. It's the only way it'll work. Uh, all right. Now, Andrew, we had you on right when Don't Trust Andrew Maine was first announced, and, and we talked about everything that we could. But now that we are far closer to the debut, there's been some promos out. Uh, let's let everybody who is listening know what they can expect a week from now with two back-to-back episodes of Don't Trust Andrew Maine, January 13th on A&E. 
I will personally give everybody who watches one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> What are you? What are you telling people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By by the way, like what in you, my mind, uh, <laughs> uh, in your heart, and that's where it matters. Like, what do you? Uh, have you? It, we've talked about this a little bit off the air, but like, are people coming out of the woodwork that you haven't heard from in a long time that suddenly see you uh, with your famous face all over the A and E's? Um, not like not in a crazy way, but I mean, it, it's you certainly you know your family will tell you, hey, our friend saw it, or we saw the promos, we saw that. And then, uh, like, my brother just called me. My brother goes, I'm calling you right now. And as soon as I dialed, your commercial is playing on History Channel. Wow. <laughs> like, like, why are you surprised? What's wrong with that? <laughs> why shouldn't I be there, too? Uh, is, that a, is that a common thing? I guess, I guess so. I guess. I mean, you're talking to a guy who cut the cord and doesn't have cable. Holy crap, I just realized I'm not going to be able to see your show. I'm going to have to get cable. Yes, you said you're going to get Yeah, you are. Show. Or order it on iTunes probably the next day or the day after. Are they doing those? Which, yeah, I think, yeah, if you can buy it on iTunes, definitely do that. Watch it on cable and buy it on iTunes. Yes. Yes. And it's oh, all right. a joke. This is why you do the negotiating in the family. That, <laughs> that's the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, one exciting thing about being on a and &E is a and &E got a, is very aggressive on digital platforms. They have the a and &E app, which you can get in the, in the uh, for iOS and for Android, which allows you to watch a number of shows day after. Mm -hmm. And they're on iTunes. Many of the new shows are on iTunes. I expect we'll probably be there too. Internationally speaking, there's going to be an international rollout, so those people in other countries will be available around the world. So, uh, yeah, you know, they, they understand that people watch things in many different ways. Uh, I have a weird question. Like, I feel like we need some kind of exclusive announcement. We need to make headlines on an SFW because we got you guys yes. available. Uh, yep. I just need to know what is the first, and I'll be surprised and impressed if any of you four actually know it, what is the first spoken word on the first episode. Like, this is an exclusive announcement. Oh, I know this. Do you? This is, yeah. I think, I think I know this. Does anyone else? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Is this of the first episode that will air? Or yes. the very first episode ever shot? Well, if you know the one, I, I, whichever one, but, but I'd love, I'd love, wow, chat room. Uh, I would love to know the, uh, uh, the, the one that, the first one will air. First one that'll air. I should know this because I personally filmed this. So... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what precedes that? Hold on. Great radio. Hey, guys. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Is it on screen word? Is this an on screen word or is voice open? Yeah, you look. can phone a friend. <laughs> Can, can, I, can I tell you a little bit of a little inside info, though? Yeah, please. So we have our, because I think we're maybe thinking maybe it might be the show intro, which we all know. Uh, there was an alternate version of the show intro where you did not hear me say a word because everybody loved I, when I said my name's Andrew Main and I like to blank with people. Wow. Yeah. So how many of those? I, I made Andrew swear for the first <laughs> time in his career on camera and not just swear, Yes. Drop the granddaddy of all swear words. Okay, so how long, do I, at that moment, I would imagine that you think you're like really on to something. <laughs> and then you're like, this is going to be great. Everyone's going to love cursing Andrew. <laughs> and then at which point does the enthusiasm falter? And you're like, well, maybe we should say he screws with people. No, no, oh, we said it. Long way. Oh, this was, this was a battle at the highest levels of corporate America. We I mean, were locked. Was, we were locked. The episode was done. It was in the camp. I mean, it was like, it was in the show. We're like, we won this battle. And and then we did. And then we lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's also like, do you want to be the, the team that goes to the mat and fights the man over the ability to curse on basic cable prime time? <laughs> what I was doing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, but but still, I mean, and by the way, I'm a huge fan of bleeping because it's like everyone knows what you said, but you don't have to have any of the stigma of having actually said it. Uh, but uh, so Did okay. you guys just like dub it in like like a like a movie curse or it's like I'm Andrew Maine and I like to flip yes. with people. <laughs> well, you know, it was really funny because he really said it and then we had to bleep it. And then I had to digitally reframe it so you couldn't quite see what his lips were saying. It was a whole rigmarole. So we so, were there. We met every demand, and then they changed it. So you didn't you didn't record two takes. Like at the time, you were committed. Like this is going to be the line. And then they're all like, "Please don't curse." 
And then I was like, all in, all in. Wow. I'm like, I thought about it. I'm like, this is what I want you to say. I'm like, I get it. Okay. She didn't think I'd do it. No, I didn't. She didn't think I did. She <laughs> thought there'd be some big argument or whatever. Biagio, I understand. Biagio, like, we'll do these things. We do like line reads to camera. He loves, I go into total Ron Burgundy mode and I have no idea what I'm saying. And he got me to say some crazy offensive stuff. It's on camera <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, cause cause you're, cause you, did, you just get a sheet and the sheet's just like, well, let me see what Melinda like, thinks. When okay, I, I got it. Cart. I guess they're going to connect this to something else, you know, and your mom's <laughs> a hooker, you know, like, okay, all right. And then, then I say it and I realize that he's back there laughing, yeah. cracking up, but I'm like, just that like, wasn't a real line, was it? So what was David the, Duke's a hell of a foosball play. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the what was the biggest surprise for you as you were going through the process? Because I would imagine that that you have an idea of what the show is going to be, but then once you're in it, you sort of discover what the show wants to be. Or or am I way off on that? Because the projects I've worked on, like I've thought it's going to be one way, and I'm like, oh, it wants to be this other thing instead. Well, no, I think you're exactly right. I think a part of it is that. You know, there's who somebody is when you're in a room with them one to one. And then there's who somebody is who you don't know and seeing him through the camera on TV. And so, uh, you know, you have to figure out how do we what 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 small part of me may be likable. How do we take that and expand that and make that work in the medium of television and then have me go out there and do things that, you know, if you describe it like, oh, it's a guy who messes with people, does this. He's like, this sounds like the most the worst person in the world, which is true. <laughs> but the goal is to try to make that likable and how you have to work towards doing that. Well, and, and so what did you discover? Any, any tricks? How could Couldn't I be done. a dick Couldn't and have everyone done. love me? <laughs> Editing. Editing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of takes. A lot of takes. You know, listen, I mean, it's the truth. Cause the fact of the matter is for Andrew to front a show like this, that's on a &E, that's like you're one of the most watched cable networks, he's got to find a way to walk that line where he screws with people, but when he's done – they still want to have a beer with him. Yeah. Well, how you know? did that work out? He, he can't go so far if they don't like him anymore. Yeah. And that's no easy task. And that was when I was like, well, that's why you're the star of the show, dude. Figure it out. Um, but I think that Andrew, you know, I think he did a really good job of walking that line. And sometimes we crossed it. Yeah, Actually, we crossed it just about every time. But, you know, and, and then he would dial back. And by the end, it was we were all in a good place. Did, did you? Actually, uh, uh, Brian, I think a great example of this, if you, if you go to their, their Facebook page, and again, that Facebook page is facebook.com slash don't trust Uh Germain. Uh, go to the, the, uh, the grocery store clip. We don't have to play the whole thing, but, but just, just a part of it, I think, is uh, a great slice of that DNA of Andrew being, you know, yeah, mean I'm, to the point I'm, of... I'm trying to find the grocery store, but I can't find it beneath all of these GQ photos. <laughs> <laughs> of Andrew Maid looking suave as hell. <laughs> all right, here we go. This one right but, here. Oh, yeah, and also, wait, wait real, real quick before we get to this. It is bizarre to look at Andrew, like, in in that it gets the big celebrity, like, gloss paint job. Because Andrew's always been, the, like, I would I would say, a very handsome man. Yes. No, like, look. It's that's like, that's like a dude on, on The Bachelor. That's like, you know, uh, you know some some species that roams around, uh, you know, the wild urban plains. I mean, I guess that's the weird part. It's like, yes, yes, he's charming, he's good looking, he's Andrew Maine. He's also one of the most self-deprecating people I've ever met. So to see him just look an utterly baller pimp on this page and, and repeatedly like, oh, you want some more of me? I'm here again. Is just, <laughs> oh, hello. I didn't know I'd see you here. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, just it took it took more people to make that photo shoot work than I went to high school with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so uh, here I'll start playing this. You tell me you tell me when and what, Justin. I'm Andrew Maine, and I love to screw with people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, hold on, that's the first time that I've looked at it in that vein of understanding that they had to take out that the uh, F word, the F bomb. <laughs> Don't worry, it's going to be the safest it's ever been. For extra protection, you need use one of these. Okay. What are you going to do to my phone? Oh, my... See? Protect it. Protect it. I'm regretting this decision. Where's my phone? You know what's better than just plastic and paper? Glass. No way! Don't trust Andrew May. A new series coming in January on a and &E. Did anyone, did anyone, like, get mad? Like, seriously mad and unusable? 
Uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's it. a yes. There's a longer cut of that somewhere. Yeah. You see what happens. Let's just say when you have a stack of pickle jars, it's Chekhov's pickle jar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's knowing that line of when somebody's going to get, is if they're getting too pissed and trying to pull them back into having fun because we didn't want to make, I mean, we've had like when we do our big stunts where I've got to, you know, help get somebody get, you know, teach somebody a lesson and I've got to really drive it home. Like I had a woman who loves her TV and I do something horrible to her TV when she's not expecting it. And she is a sweet, sweet woman. Next thing you know, I looked at her hand is clenching her keys and I can see the whites of her knuckles as she's just getting ready to punch me. And I'm trying to help her husband out because they've got like a serious issue they're trying to work through. And so I'm trying to do a really good deed here. And I'm like, these keys are gonna punch me in the face. I'm going to be scarred for life. That'll make really you good You want to know how I got these scars? Well, and what's Basic funny cable. is even as it's happening, I would imagine you're doing the mental calculus. You're like, scarred for life, good, good television. <laughs> yeah. You just dive in. Yeah. I burned Biagio twice with fire as we're trying to get shots just because he had to hold the shot long enough. Oh, my it's God. It's true. You can see it. In the, watch the opening of the show, people. You'll see this really cool shot where Andrew... GQ Andrew, as per the Facebook page, just randomly lights some money on fire and throws it at the camera while I'm behind the camera. And let me tell you, a fireball in real life sounds just like it does in the movie. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and Andrew, God bless him, he held that pose. He did not even pretend to be concerned for me because my hair almost went up in flames. Oh, what, what, what a like sacrifice man. by Andrew. Just watch that opening shot. Proudest shot of my life. But remember the fifty dollar bill trick I tried with you? Oh yeah, dude! It was a hundred. It was a hundred. Where he comes into me and he goes, "Hey, I think I got, I think I, I got a really cool method. Check this out." He holds up a hundred dollar bill. Now we're in my edit bay, right? This little like eight by eight room. He holds up a hundred dollar bill, lights it on fire, it bursts into flames. I'm like, "This trick is awesome!" And then I realized from the look on Andrew's face. It's not a trick. <laughs> there's there's pieces of hundred dollar bill floating like plasma in space. I'm circling my head, and I'm and, and suddenly I realize, oh my god, this whole office is about to go up in flames, and we're swinging like this, and there's just pieces of hundred dollar bill burning and floating, and then Joe walks in. And she goes, what the hell are you doing? And she to those I'm, I'm holding <laughs> the sedge rivets of my $100 bill. You realize, like, if we were going to do, uh, like, a docudrama of, like, the, the rise and fall of Andrew Maine, this would be the opening scene where Andrew Maine is so drunk with success, he's using his, his wizard powers to float $100 bills that he's setting on fire left and right. I'll tell you what, it's just another one of those relatable stories from Los Angeles and <laughs> television industry. <laughs> That one time we accidentally burned down our gigantic office with a lit hundred dollar bill. <laughs> people, people are saying this story needs to be on the DVD special features if we can sneak it on there. <laughs> but let me just tell you, there's nothing more exciting, completely terrifying, and totally dangerous than being in an office where people are trying to design magic. Because inevitably, oh yeah, you almost die twice a week. Yeah. Speaking so, of which, can we can we talk a bit about the the consulting team or or? Uh, you want to know what Brian? We can. After we we already talked about before about lighting money on fire. Yep. You're lighting money on fire. What? You don't get a Squarespace website. Oh my gosh! Why 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 am I lighting money on fire? Because you're an idiot. Money? That's why. <laughs> And you won't listen to reason. I've been telling you for weeks and months and years to get Squarespace, and yet you refuse. Uh, yeah, well, I just so you spitting in my face right now. I, okay? I mean, I, I just maybe maybe I just don't see what the big deal is. Why is everyone all talking about the Squarespaces? How about this? Unlike you, they're constantly improving. <laughs> no, I mean, wait, wait, constantly improving. They they weren't new born features, perfect. New designs, even better support. How about this? Unlike you, they're beautifully designed. <laughs> That's um, their new tagline. Squarespace, unlike you. <laughs> it's easy to use. <laughs> Incredibly easy. But if you want some help, Squarespace has an amazing support team that works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How about unlike that trick about burning the $100 bill? It's expensive. <laughs> And how about this? Unlike 
uh, a, the office that we talked about. It's mobile ready. <laughs> Running out of gas, folks. Even their code is beautiful and hostings included. Uh, to start a free two-week trial with no credit card required, start building your website. Uh, when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use the offer code NSFW1 and get 10% Number off. Number one in the hood, G. Top of the plow, goddamn humdinger, gold cup, blue ribbon, giant foam finger. Number one, NSFW number one. Get uh, just just one. Don't put number. <laughs> uh, and get ten percent off uh, and show your support for NSFW. I'd like to thank Squarespace for their support of NSFW. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. Yeah. Uh, what was my question that I was asking right before we went live? We we're about to get the insights. So- oh, talking about the team. Oh, uh, I mean. You know, what's great about being able to do something like this, being at work with a lot of great people. And uh, uh, so it's very much a collaborative effort, but I mean, it, it's just exciting. And so, you know, we had uh, Danny Garcia, who you guys know, Rico De La Vega, uh, Blake Voigt, Chris Korn. And I I feel so fortunate being able to get a group of people that, you know, the last time these guys got together was to work with, you know, David Blaine. So, you know, bringing a team like that into coming to help out is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, that's where it's you, you come up with crazy ideas and then you have to have people figure out how the hell are you going to make this stuff happen? And you might have an idea of a method or whatever, but it takes it takes a lot of people to, to work on that and make that work. Yeah. yeah, I think what also was great is that they all, um, you know, they worked with some of the, the greatest magicians out there. But, you know, what we're doing in Andrew's brand of magic is very specific to mischief. And so, you know, it was really about, um, you know, taking Andrew's ideas and, and figuring out a way to make magic work, not just for television, but that would really fit the brand of the show and the brand of Andrew. Yeah, it's, listen, it's a hard show because if you think about, like, Take the Chris Angel show for for example. Like that was an hour long show, and they would do. I, I think. Am I right in saying three or four illusions over the course of an hour? Is that right, Andrew? About like five or six. Five or six. Maybe some, some more magic than that. But yeah. yeah. Was- but we're we're doing like seven, eight illusions an episode in a half hour. That's thirteen episodes. That's a ton of magic. That's a lot of magic to you know to 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 come up with and perfect. And major kudos to Andrew and the team because. You, you know, all I would be like is, all right, can, can we can we blow it up again? <laughs> can we have another explosion? Can you light it on fire? You know, I mean, I was I was I was done with hundred dollars. Go ahead. So. Yeah. yeah, no card tricks, no coin tricks. Yeah, that's, that is. We yeah, have thirteen no episodes tricks, no of our magic series. There's not a single card trick in the entire show. Yeah. What? Um, I guess that's and, that's one of the things. Is like, was it a stated goal that you wanted to make all the magic unconventional? You didn't want to have any of the trappings of traditional magic. Yeah, we didn't want to. You know, I think that when David Blaine, you know, came on the scene, he changed the way we looked at magic in a very positive way. And we all think a lot about television, the medium and storytelling. And we knew for what we wanted to do, we wanted to take it to another step in a different direction. And that came down to the idea of, you know, who is this person that I'm doing this stuff to? What is their real reaction besides being either full of, oh, my God, that's, you know, wonder or joy or whatever. And what happens if they really are inconvenienced for a moment? What happens if you can take this magic and use it to try to have a real effect on somebody in the long term in a relationship between a father and a daughter or a husband and a wife? And so that was the dimension we wanted to bring to it. And, uh, you know, that was what made it exciting. And that was the challenge was bringing in people who've worked on magic before and say, okay, let's forget about card tricks. Let's forget about that. Let's think about the emotional impact of what we do. And well, sometimes it can be in a playful, negative way, but ultimately positive. Well, and that's and, one of the and, things. And, and, and so rarely is it. Uh, and the Ace of Spades is your declaration to not get divorced, right? Like- <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's one of the things you notice from all of the promos. One thing they all have in common is none of them end on a dig me beat. None of those end on like uh, you doing a, 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 a stage bow, basically. Instead, all of them seem to end with a what you going to do now moment, which I think is a, a, a like what I'm assuming that that's something we're going to see more of in the show. And how did you come to that beat and realize the magic that's that, that that's the most interesting thing is leaving somebody stuck with that situation. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, we've seen the magician as the God figure. The magician is the, Hey, look, look at the amazing things I can do. And I think that it gets to be interesting when you say, okay. Yes. 
It does when you pause <laughs> in thought for a moment, and both. Yeah. Did we lose him? Oh, there uh, he is. No, okay, he, he's back, but now Justin's paused. Oh, there we go. All right, sorry. You say uh, uh, you were saying you were a god. Yeah, I froze the internet to prove it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there's the magician is hey, I'm a god figure, but then it's like, what happens if you can? If we understand what magic is, we get it. We know that guys can walk around and do magic in sort of fun ways. What happens when you put it in a situation where people one aren't expecting it? But two, not not a hidden camera kind of show where it's 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 this sort of artificial reality kind of thing, but where it's more of just going out there and capturing people off guard and then follow through and see what happens when they experience this and taking my role more as the prankster and mischievous type person. Yeah, you've been doing that. Yeah, for I mean, a while. I, I think yeah. what Andrew does so well is he gets out of the way of the magic and gets out of the way of the reactions and and by by almost like stepping back a little bit, he's able to really push their buttons and, and pull their strings and, and get these amazing reactions out of people. And what's really hard, and I give Andrew major credit for this, is like he's tailoring the magic as he goes to the individual person because he'll learn something about the person and the whole trick will change. He'll just, he'll just like all of a sudden we're going in a brand new direction. And I mean, you know, the, the, the basic of the trick is sort of the same, but he's tailoring it to them and their story so we get to a whole new place we never even thought we we're going to get to. And that's just... A how, tribute to Andrew. How quickly well, you does... Know, I'll tell you what, I think, you know, what is amazing about your collaboration, because uh, I know Andrew thinks so much about it, especially as an author, and it is kind of a staple of uh, the stuff that j you guys have done, Joe and Biagio, and you talk about a lot in your podcast, is the story element to it, you know, and, and, and kind of drawing out those natural beats on an arc that, you know, is going to be uh, fun for people to watch on television, and... Uh, so rarely is that ever seen in magic, you know, which is odd because, like, it is this kind of natural sort of storytelling method, and so rarely is it anything other than just sort of like, and then I did this thing, and then I did this thing, and then there was another thing I did. Well, and yeah, I there's actually a couple of times in the show where we kind of fell in love with the magic, and we shot it, and we're like, ah, there was something about it that didn't quite work, and then we realized that it was because it was like, look, he did something really cool and amazing with magic, and the people were there, and were like, wow, that's really cool and amazing, and then that was the end of it. But the stuff that really works is where it's like, oh my god, he did something really cool and amazing, oh, but wait a second, where did my phone go? Or I just lost my keys, or how am I going to get my bike back? So, you know, that was I the stuff where it. then the story kept going, and it, you know, it didn't stop at the God moment, it keeps going with Oh great! Now what? It's their. It becomes their story, not Andrew's, which is really fun because they're living in their altered universe where they're a little bit screwed because of Andrew, and we're having fun along the way because we know. I mean, we're not killing anybody, you know. It's it's fun. It's mischief, but Season it's two. all because of what Andrew how Andrew left them. So. And we also have some great credit <laughs> moments at the end of the show where you know you see Andrew, you know, after we kind of wrap cameras, you know, go back to them and it's like, oh, you know, hey, let me help you out. I mean, we don't actually, you know, completely um, steal their cars. I mean, we'd be filthy rich right now if we actually <laughs> stole everything we stole. Oh my gosh, all them wallets! Whew, I'd be shopping right now. So, uh, so how many? Uh, <clears throat> and I totally believe, and I. Okay, I'm about to ask a question, and there's a spectrum of possibility, and I want you to know going into this that I have such confidence in your abilities to improvise and come up with stuff on the fly, Andrew, that I would believe any answer you would give, whether it's uh, zero or, or 100, but how narrow is the gap between, uh, between you learning about the person and then performing a tailor-made magic trick for them? I, I know that, that, that you have the principles of the tricks worked out in your mind, but as they were saying, they were complimenting you on be being able to come up with stuff on the fly. How narrow is that gap? Are we talking like five minutes, five hours? Well, I mean, it depends. Like you might, I, most of the people, I don't meet until right before because we just find them. And mm -hmm. so- you've got to very quickly assess this person and say, okay, you know, I run into a guy who's got a pink shirt and flip flops and I got to say, okay, where can I take this guy? How much, how much can I push this guy's buttons, you know, and then bleed him into something. And then you have ideas like I can go into this trick, or I can go to that trick or do something like that, you know, pre-planned, but then you can sort of say, I'm going to do this other beat to him because I think this guy's not going to see this coming. It'll be funnier. He will. I like it when people push back. I love it when I give people a hard time and then they push back and it's because they're 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 at play and they're having fun with it. And so Yeah, uh, I, I think more so than, you know, completely changing the magic on the fly, what Andrew's doing is 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 creating the story on the fly with them. So it's like, you know, the guy's walking up and it's the pink shirt and the flip flops and Andrew's really great at 
getting people in that just uncomfortable space where then they're primed to have something magically happen to them. I'm you know, very but awkward. not push them to the point where they walk away. You know, where it's just it's just this nice, you know, and he's great at when you when he sees, you know, he's losing someone and bringing them back and then pushing them away and bringing them back and people are like, what is happening I, to me right okay, now? Okay, I, I got to imagine that when you produce as much content as you guys did, you have some colossal failures where they're just like, like maybe something that almost works and you're just like, it just breaks. <laughs> I'm loving the reaction that I'm seeing already. I don't know if it's something you don't want to talk about or not, but but if there's any of these awesome meltdown stories you could share, oh, I'd love to we've hear. We've had, I mean, people take it really well, but we've had stuff like a lot of times, like I'll end a trick where let's say, you know, maybe, you know, I, I, I take some object of yours and I trap it in some way where you can't get to it. And then while you're focused on that, I know your attention's on like, how do I get this out? And I'll walk away. I've had at least twice where I'm walking away and I'm all smug. Like I pulled that off, look into the camera in front of me and I get tackled from behind because somebody's just will not have that. And, and no, a funny way, I hope. But no, no. Okay, so you know, I, I think like so a lot of times. I mean, obviously, you guys are there with cameras. I mean, you guys are trying to film things as stealthily as possible so as to not affect the situation. But by and large, people can see somebody with a light and a camera. You know, recording. Absolutely, them. it's not like, hidden camera at all. We always start cameras in a surveillance position so they don't see it at first. But the moment Andrew has them hooked, the cameras come out, and but at that point, he, you know, they're one on one with him. They kind of see yeah. the cameras. They know there's cameras, but it's not Think like to catch a predator. <laughs> <laughs> well, and actually, that's but I, mean, I think like the presence of it kind of puts people in a mindset where it's like, well, I don't want to do something horrifying, you know, because I'm being recorded by a camera. So it tends to bring up maybe a little bit more manners than if Andrew was just marauding on the streets by himself, you know, without any other, you know, cameras or lights or anything. But it just shows you how much further how much further you had to push somebody to get a react where somebody wants to physically attack andrew knowing full well that there are a crew of people recording in in uh, amazing hd quality yeah I, I, i'll tell you it's 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 a it's a tribute again to andrew because he knows how to push them buttons and you know and we all know andrew's kind of modest right like he doesn't doesn't like the brag but to really answer your question from before brian i mean you know it's not five minutes it's not five okay. hours it's it's like a matter of seconds because we're sitting in it's what's called video village you know we're sitting back in like this hidden tent where we got all these monitors and we can see all the angles and more than 90% of the time, I'm like, well, I have no idea where this is going, but I'm sure it's going to be awesome. And I'll just sit there and watch. I, and, uh, you know, he will he will change on a dime. And I'll be like, okay, this is going somewhere. Just keep going with it. He's taking it somewhere. Just keep going. And we've ended up with tricks that go somewhere I would have never guessed. But, uh, again, thanks to Andrew and the way he just sticks with it, it ends up being great. You know, that's, that's actually a good – can also run really fast. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I that's mean, like, it was a really big downtown city block. You guys just ran. I mean, the guy just kept chasing you. And it, it, I mean, yeah. yeah, we're like, where are they? That's amazing. I got, I got chased. I ran around the block, right? I'm running and I see this guy and I'm thinking like, I've lost this guy. And I look and he's like six feet behind me. And so I shout over my shoulder. I go, I can keep this up all day, right? <laughs> Two more steps and I trip and I almost skid across the sidewalk <laughs> on my face. Barely managed to get back up. I reached the end of the block. I'm like, I can't run anymore because okay. I'm going high speed. And this guy spends more time running than I am. So I wait for him behind the corner. And he comes around the corner. And I go, good job, man. Good job. And I high five him. And he's like, oh, oh yeah. All right. Cool. cool. Okay. So I okay. know I had to change his, his attitude quickly. Let's, let's go back to that him. moment when you're hauling ass and then you trip. And you realize that there's an alternate universe in which you skid and your face peels across the pavement. Um, I would have to imagine in this flash gestalt moment, you think back to your relationship with Mary and Joe Cambiaggio and as good of friends as you are and as much as you guys respect each other, I would imagine that none of them would hesitate to absolutely uh, overrule you and stick that as, as a, ma I mean, that would be in a major moment. Like there, you wouldn't be able to say no to, to, to showing that, right? Like that's one of the, that's one of the perils of, of doing unscripted is that it might not go the way that you would like. I would have no problem with that. Uh, my fear would be what would happen when Mary and Joe, when I come back to video village with skid marks across my face and we have to shoot for four more weeks below and, the neck. And, yeah, and the beating I'm going to get. Yes. Below that's the what, neck from them. <laughs> that's when they, know, uh, 
they, they retcon you as having ganged your w- wizard powers in a horrible lightning strike or something, and that's why you're scarred. No, they just they'd shoot around it like a pregnant actress. They would just <laughs> always have him like Let's holding up ice face. packs to his face. Oh, like the the rest of the sheet. ball. If I bought it running like that, I would insist we use it. I mean, that's the kind of show. This yeah, is. I mean, listen, that's a good point, man. You know, Andrew goes down. Yeah, we're in trouble, you know, because what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We're, we got a bunch of shoot things left, and that was like we'd have to use it for continuity. Yeah, we'd have to use it for continuity. <laughs> we'd have to check the whole man, like the we have to go to AD and be like, guys, <laughs> but your don't show's delivered me. in about three months. Late. Man. Uh, all right, so it, it is 10 p.m. on A and E, January 13th. Nine. I have no idea why. Am I hearing a massive? Uh, Echo. Yeah, sorry. We, we, we are not on this end. Uh, there's a little bit of a Skype hookup happening. Hopefully it'll work itself out. But uh, yeah, uh, t- uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, this upcoming Monday the 13th, uh, yeah. Garfield's favorite day. Uh, that's how you can remember. Remember Andrew Garfield and uh, and Andrew Maine. Uh, and so you guys give us your best uh, moment that people will uh, see in the hour of television that you will give them next monday your favorite moment that people are going to see between those two half hours hey uh, uh also uh real quick also in the chat room they're wondering if dvr counts and stuff people are uh, they really want to make sure you guys get the numbers dvrs count you have to watch it and dvr it oh you have yeah, to watch you it DVR, you have to watch it when you, you can't just record it's right. they tell when you play it oh uh, i didn't know that you, 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 they call it dvr plus three you know you have to or, I'm sorry, what? Live. Plus oh, live plus three. So, so how's that work, Joe? So it's live, and then you have to watch it within three days off of your DVR. So you're you gonna record more... it on Monday, but you have to watch it before Wednesday night. Are you gonna do any live events? Are you gonna be like live tweeting, uh, talking, giving trivia and stuff during? I will be live tweeting during the show. Good. Yeah, yeah, we all will be. And that's uh, that's at Andrew. May. I will be. That's <laughs> I will not because I'll have to go to like a bar or something to watch it. Maybe I will. Uh, but uh, it, it's at Andrew Main, and uh, what about you guys, Joe Biagio? At Joe Biagio, and that's B I A G I O. Yeah. Okay, and, and J O K E. Uh, yes, correct. Uh, and 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 Mary, are you going to be live tweeting? What's your what's your Twitter? Yep, at M underscore J. <laughs> really, you got M underscore J? We got her on the Twitter early. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, okay, so uh, Justin, did you have one more question before we go on to the movie draft minute? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think I accidentally cut you off on that. No, I think I think that was. Oh, oh yeah. No, I wanted to know uh, what, what what was like the the thing that people should be watching for in in that hour of Don't Trust Andrew Maine. Well, I'm gonna be totally selfish and say the moment when he almost burns my face off in the opening <laughs> credits. Look at that fireball! And remember, it was me on the other side of the camera who didn't move. There you go. So, we I, shall, I want you to watch me as that happens to realize. The composure and professionalism I had as I watched this fireball head towards my meal ticket <laughs> and, and retain. He'll be okay. It's, <laughs> the, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> don't trust Andrew Man. The courageous story of a cameraman and a flaming dollar bill. Uh, <laughs> Okay, let's take a moment and check in on the Movie Draft Minute. Here we go. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute for the week of January 6th, 2014. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. It's a brand new year, and all movies have been released. We've got a little we don't really have to draft, watch so let's go check out the rankings. Brian Brushwood's in sixth place with $215 million. Tom Merritt's in fifth place with $300.5 million. Jeff Kanaz in fourth place with $404.5 million. Casey McKinnon's in third place with $489.7 million. Justin Robert Young falls to second place with $520.5 million. And in first place with $566.4 million, it's Pajay Robert Balasar. And that is your Movie Minute for the week of January 6th, 2014. Oh, wait. Hang on, Justin. Uh, we actually have a very special message uh, sent in by Father Robert Balasar. <laughs> oh, God. Let's, let's take a listen. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, Brian, jury, chat room. I'm, I'm sorry, I almost didn't see you come in. Listen, someone just told me that I have, at least temporarily taken the lead in the winter movie draft, and I want to say I'm speechless. I want to thank the two of you, along with the Diamond Club, for making the movie draft into something special, something wonderful, something magical, and for letting me be part 
Oh, that magic. Uh, I can't be there to participate in the show today. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm at CES, I'm working. But I wanted to send you a digital avatar who could express in the best way possible the emotion, the feeling, the thanks I have for the two of you and all those special people in chat realm. Ah! Whoa, whoa, what was that? <laughs> if you're down with that, ah! I want to hear you say, ah! Uh, Justin, I was just saying how special you and Brian and chat realm are. Let uh, me hear you in the chat room. Uh, uh, Wanna hear you say, uh? Uh? Oh, uh, snap. Justin, the, the draft isn't over for a month. I don't think this is the right time to celebrate. Uh, oh, snap. Hold up, Justin. I haven't won anything yet. I, I don't think I really want to gloat. Puerto Rican League champ. <laughs> Puerto Rican League champ. What the f is the Puerto Rican League? Oh, snap! Well, I was just saying how humbled I am to play in the company of internet superstars. Are you positive that it's right to celebrate like this? Well, otherwise that's really ridiculous what I just did. <laughs> I, I respect you, but I would hate to be caught celebrating prematurely, so I think I'm just gonna wait for the draft to end. So, to you, to Brian, to Chat Realm, peace out. I hope uh, to see you when I get back from CES, and uh, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how great is Father Robert, man. <laughs> that may have been the classiest troll in the history of NSFW. That's, uh, by the way, did you notice that he's reading, um, it looks like a book of, of funeral. The Order of Christian Funerals is what the book is that he's reading Unaudible, from. Unaudible, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Uh, uh, yeah, dude. Uh, frozen, man. It froze <laughs> my butt off. It froze and your chances now of winning. Now wears it as a hat. Oh, uh, all right. Well, look. I guess we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap everything up here. Uh, what an amazing time! I'm so unbelievably excited for you, Andrew. Congratulations on everything. We'll all be there on Monday, um, and we'll all be watching you live tweet. I'm. I, I, it's so weird to have a friend that I've turned into a fan of. So congratulations. Justin, you got anything else? <laughs> uh, no, listen, again, uh, facebook.com slash don't trust Andrew Maine. Uh, what is the, the Twitter account, guys? Uh, at is, Andrew May. <laughs> at Andrew May, yeah. yeah. And then you hit, 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 hit at AETV. There we go. At AETV. Uh, Got it. By the way, let me just, I'm going to just throw another thing mention. Like, anybody out there who has any interest in getting into TV, seriously listen to their podcast. Producing it is unscripted. Really the real deal. I get people ask me questions all the time. I have an idea. I have this. I'm like, listen to their podcast. If you can't be bothered to listen to their podcast, then don't do it. Don't dream. When you go to sleep at night, don't think, don't wish, don't have any ambition in your heart. Just go to sleep and never wake up. Yeah, that inspiring message brought to you by Andrew Maine. By the way, don't forget uh, Producing Unscripted soon to be featuring our new reality show, uh, Spay Class. A young Justin Robert Young decides to go to veterinary school after being motivated by Bob Barker's classic sign-off from The Price is Right. See you next Tuesday, guys. I think make that uh, better would be Brian's face on the cat. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I ran have enough time to get to the uh, me getting cursed out story, we'll do it next week. Yeah. Die in a fire. See you next week. Go. There we go. Why, it looks like you're pregnant. Yes, eight months. Well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing! You guys had cameras in there? <laughs> How did you know? Funny you should point that funny. out. I was asked by nobody I will name to uh, make a certain pregnant person levitate in the middle of the meeting. I was what? like, I, I, I did. I'm not, he's not kidding. I was like, come on, that'll be awesome. We've all seen a magician levitate a woman. She's eight and a half months pregnant. You get her up in the air, we sell the show, dude. And he would not go there. Well, I'm like, I you know how. It. I just don't think this is ethical. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention a uh, uh, liability concern. Uh, okay, here uh, I'll do the um, the intro stuff, and then we'll we'll wrap up the recording. Um, <clears throat> This is NSFW episode 212, recorded on January 7th, 2013. Oh, it's 2014. <laughs> Double complete rainbow.